National Islamic University, Malaysia. His Excellency Professor Emeritus Tansri, Dr. Muhammad Kamal Hassan, uh, former rector of the International Islamic University and uh, the honorary advisor for uh, Centris Center for Islamization. Um, uh, His Excellency Datu Wan Muhammad bin Datu Sheikh Abdul Aziz, the political secretary to the Minister of, um, in the Prime Minister Office uh, Islamic Affairs and the former uh, Jukim uh, director. And uh, His Excellency uh, Datu Sri Diraja Dr. Zamri Abdul Qadir, Chairman, Malaysian Airport Holding Berhad, and His Excellency Imam Faisal Abdul Rauf, the founder of uh, President of Cordoba House, uh, New York. Uh, welcome to this uh, forum, uh, honoring our uh, late uh, Professor uh, Tansri, uh, Professor Dr. Muhammad Abdul Rauf, uh, the uh, first rector of the International Islamic University. Uh, in fact, I would like to thank you all. I know uh, everybody have a very tight schedule and many things to, uh, to do. And I was quite uh, pleased that uh, all of you responded to our invitation uh, for this uh, forum uh, to honor uh, the name of Tansri Professor Dr. Muhammad Abdul Rauf. <clears throat> and I would like also to, th to thank the rector, uh, actually, because he uh, urged me for, uh, for this event. And uh, alhamdulillah, finally, we we managed to reach to the, uh, to the event uh, to happen. Um, in fact, uh, um, Tansri, uh, Professor Dr. Muhammad Abdul Rauf has um, a lot of contributions along his uh, life. And uh, this contribution uh, academic and also in serving Islam. And uh, the main, the main uh, line in his life, as we can see from his CV, his works and many things, is actually serving Islam and Islamic education. Whether in Egypt, uh, Kuwait, uh, then uh, Malaysia, then United States, then Malaysia again, then United States again. So uh, it would be um, uh, a very good uh, exposure to many people uh, to know more about him, especially he was not uh, that person who uh, liked to publicize his work much. So it would be a good opportunity uh, to um, uh, see the reflection and also the um, analysis of the people who have been working with him or associated with him in any type of activity and also those who have been his students uh, at a certain point of time. Uh, without uh, further uh, delay, I would like to invite uh, mm -hmm. uh, His Excellency Dr. Dr. Mohammed Dawood Bakr, the President of the International Islamic University uh, Malaysia to uh, say his welcoming remark. Please. Thank you. Okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. <clears throat> Alhamdulillah, al-ladhi bi na'matihi tatimu salihat wa salatu wa salamu ala nabi Yehuda wa rahmah amma ba'u. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Tuwalid, the moderator. Uh, Honorable Professor Emeritus Tansri, Rector of the International Islamic University of Malaysia, Professor Emeritus Tansri, Professor Dr. Kamal Hassan, the former rector of the International Islamic University of Malaysia, uh, Honorable Dr. Wan Muhammad, the political secretary to the Minister of uh, Religion in the office of the Prime Minister, uh, Honorable, my beloved colleagues and friend, Dr. Sri Diraja Dr. Zamri Abdul Kadeh, a respected Honorable Imam Faisal, uh, distinguished participant. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, um, uh, give me great pleasure to say a few words about this great man, Professor uh, Tansri Dr. Muhammad Rauf, who has been an integral foundation of Islamic education, not only in Malaysia, but worldwide. I feel uh, both humble and honored to be invited, uh, first to be speaking about uh, this great personality. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless his soul and accept his good deeds all the way that he has been serving this ummah uh, until he passed away. And also I was a bit uh, overwhelmed uh, looking at the list of the speakers, the invited speakers 
this evening who are uh, the iconic figures of Islamic thought, Islamic education, as well as uh, a great philosopher, a great educationist in their own respective uh, way. So given that background, um, I feel um, motivated on the other side uh, of the coin to uh, give a few words or perhaps a few lines of thought about this, uh, for me, uh, uh, a mentor, a role model, as well as uh, uh, a kind of uh, iconic uh, and towering personality, towering personality uh, in the past, uh, perhaps in the past one uh, hundred years, uh, if I may say that. Um, Sometimes a role model speak louder than books and words and speeches. And tonight we are deliberating about this great role model who used to be living among us at, uh, at upon you know certain uh, time in, in the past. The transferee professor Dr. Muhammad Abdul Rauf is a rare example among scholars who serve Islam and Islamic education without much publicity. For, I mean, from my perspective, he followed to a large extent the great example of early scholars of Islam who preferred to be away from publicity and would prefer that only Allah knows what they have done and what they have contributed to the Ummah. Born in Egypt, in 1917, he witnessed the great transformation in the world through his life, starting from the Second World War and going through the independent movement across Muslim countries, including his own country, Egypt, and also Malaysia. He witnessed a great transformation in USA during his service there as a, as a director of New York Islamic Center. He was involved in many changes that took place then, such as that of the African American movement led by Malcolm X and Martin Luther King, among many other activities and contribution. Many who knew him mentioned that he played many roles in reconciliation among different fractions of Muslim and non-Muslim alike. He served as the founding director of the first Islamic college, so-called the Muslim College in Malaya, which was later known as College Islam Kalang, before independence in 1955. He was the first so-called principal of the college. Uh, uh, coincidentally, or by chance, uh, I also joined uh, the same college in 1980, about 55 years after he became the first principal of the college. Of course, the college was formed before the independent, two years before independent, and the college was very much set up under British rule. And he was crucial, and this is something uh, worth mentioning all the, all the time to get approval from the British authorities at that time to allow the local people who studied in Islamic school to be accepted in the mainstream civil service, which was restricted then for those who graduated from public school only. So he was not only the educationist, he was the policy thinker. He thought for the future and he fought for the graduates of Islamic school, Islamic colleges, uh, then to be accepted to be part of the public service uh, uh, employees in the government. He witnessed major transformation in Malaysia before and after independence and was part of it. His relationship with Malaysia continued to be the, to, to be to the last minute of his life. He came back to Malaysia in early 80s. He was invited by the Prime Minister then, uh, Dato' uh, uh, Sri Dr. Mahathir Muhammad, to lead the, the setup of the International Islamic University in Malaysia in 1983. 
so happened I joined the same university in 1989. So from that perspective, I was linked to uh, the two institutions that he was given the, the trust and the amana to establish. I, I feel proud of having that linkage to him in that manner. Uh, I, 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 I didn't have much exposure with him compared to the other great speakers tonight, but I was so happy to be affiliated to him uh, in one way or another. He was the first rector of IUM uh, before he headed to another college uh, in Tunganu, Kuza, and then he retired after a long journey of service to Islam in Egypt, USA and Malaysia respectively. Prof. Rauf left behind him not only great student who became heads of states and politician, but also he left more than 30 books, including translation from Arabic to English. His scientific legacy covered most of the Islamic subjects. Prof. Rauf, may Allah bless his soul, was an example of a Muslim who was above nationalities and narrow mind of ethnicities. He served Islam and education wherever he could, and he left a great legacy behind him that Allah knows better than any human being. I would like to encourage IIUM to celebrate his scientific legacy by reprinting his books in the same university that he founded. And we really appreciate the efforts of IIUM to name the main rectory building after his name as a symbolic gesture of appreciation. I would like to quote to the end of my speech a quote by Martin Luther King, the senior. If I can do, if I cannot go, if I cannot do great things, I can do small things in a great way. And we like to quote also the Martin Luther King, the junior. It's always the right time to do what is right. And if I may create my own quote in this regard, there's always the right person at the right time. I would like to believe Chancery Professor Dr. Muhammad Abdul Rauf was the right man at the right time, at the right place. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless his soul and bless his family members all the way. Thank you. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikum salam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Muhammad Dawood Bakr, uh, for uh, this uh, uh, very uh, nice welcoming uh, marks uh, and overview about uh, Professor uh, Raouf. Uh, uh, I will move now to our uh, first uh, speaker. Our first speaker is uh, our Tansri, uh, uh, Tansri uh, uh, Professor Zulkifli Abdurzak, Director of the International Islamic University in Malaysia. Um, I will also read a brief bio. Uh, it's a long bio, so I will just uh, pick up a few points. <laughs> Tansri Zulkifli Abdurzak is currently director of the International Islamic University in Malaysia. He was a vice chancellor of the University of Science in Malaysia for about uh, 10 years. And also, he is a media past president of the International Association uh, of Universities, IAU, uh, UNESCO affiliated organization uh, based in Paris. And uh, he was a convener. Uh, of the Regional Center for Expertise on Education for Sustainable Development uh, 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 based in USM beginning of 2005. Uh, uh, Tansri uh, Zulkifli uh, has served uh, in many capacities, uh, not only in Malaysia, but internationally. And also he has been an advocate for the uh, sustainability idea in education and in general, and also has been an advocate for um, changing the higher education system uh, and looking into new perspective uh, related to it. Um, and um, uh, also um, he has been um, a very strong advocate of uh, decolonization of the uh, higher education, uh, changing the perspective uh, of the current higher education into uh, a new perspective. Uh, he got also an honorary, uh, uh, he was an honorary professor at the University of Nottingham. Uh, from 2014 up to 2020, and he was appointed as a senior advisor to Asia Europe Institute, University of Malaya, and also he was a co-chair of the Right Livelihood College uh, Steering Committee based in the University of Bonn. Uh, 
in, in Germany until 2020. So it's a, a long uh, list of achievement, a long list of uh, also struggling for a good higher education system. And uh, I, again, I would like to thank him. Um, we were planning to, to do the forum on uh, Tansri uh, Professor Mohammed Abdul Rauf, and he was a main motivator for, uh, for this one. And uh, he pushed us to do it uh, soon. Uh, and uh, I would like to, and again, express my gratitude for his support for this uh, event. Without delay, I would like to invite uh, Tansri uh, Rector to uh, present his speech. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Walid. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. Wa salatu wa salamu shafil anbiya musalin. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. La hawla wa la kuwaita ala billah. President uh, Daud, uh, Professor Kamal Hassan, uh, Datuk Wan Muhammad, uh, Datuk Sri Diraja Zamri, and last but not least, my brother Imam Faisal. Selamat Hari Raya to all of you. Uh, indeed, I am very delighted to be invited uh, to this uh, very esteemed panel, but I am probably the least fortunate among you because unlike uh, Datuk Daud, who have been uh, in the footstep of uh, uh, the late Professor uh, Abdul Rauf, uh, I can only talk about him from a far away observer and admirer. Uh, I was then uh, not associated at all with anything that is Islamic in terms of education. Uh, I was in another college called the Malay College rather than um, the Islamic College. Uh, but yet this name, Abdul Rauf, then as a principal of College Islam, uh, rings a bell very loudly uh, in the speech of uh, my being a student and later on an, an academic. Uh, I felt that uh, Abdul Rauf uh, is aptly the uh, rector of the university. Uh, given not only what has been said by Dato uh, Daud, but more importantly, I think he is, by my standard, uh, a Malaysian uh, in, in a way. Uh, he speaks Malay. He tried to assimilate Islam in the context of the Malay archipelago, certainly in the, in, in this, in the context of Malaya. Uh, he is very much into uh, trying to build Islam within the context of the Nusantara. I know a lot of uh, Hafiz background by speaking uh, and making friends with uh, Brother Imam Faisal, uh, who was then uh, uh, a visitor to the Al Bukhari International University uh, in in the in the in the early uh, 2011 or something like that, uh, where we exchanged ideas a little bit about what his father is trying to do and what uh, Stansi uh, Mokhtar al-Buhari is trying to do also in the context of AIU then. Now, I begin to learn that uh, Professor Abdul Rauf uh, is very much an Islamic scholar uh, in his own right. Uh, he writes a lot, and this is something that makes me feel uh, a little bit obligated in terms of uh, what to do as far as Islamic University is concerned. Uh, when I was offered this job to be the rector one of the things that uh, inhibits me from saying no outright is certainly his character. Uh, what he has done to the university, and I am not at all uh, within the reach of his uh, achievements as far as scholarly is concerned, and certainly as, as a good Muslim. So I have very little to, to say about, about him in that particular sense. But now that I am in university, I begin to appreciate what he has done in trying to sow the early seeds of what this university uh, ought to be. He has got a wide uh, uh, view of what Islam is all about and what this university being an international university uh, ought to be. He's not narrowing it down to a very specific idea of what Islam is, as in many other Islamic universities and colleges, but brought a very large spectrum of what the university is all about. And I can see that from the kind of writing that he has left behind. And some of this writing indeed is a very important guidance for me in trying to lead where the university ought to go now that we are in the 21st century, more so after the pandemic. And there's so much more lessons that need to be learned from what he has written in some of his books. Indeed, some of his books are very much tailored 
to the Malayan and the Malaysian sort of context. And I think there is a very rich sort of uh, exposition coming from a non-Malaysian, as it were, seeing it from outside in and what Malaysia uh, ought to be in the context of Islam. We Malaysian normally see it within our limited scope of what Islam is all about, given our culture, given our civilization. And yet Professor Rauf is able to expand that scope and tell us there is a lot more thing that we Malay Muslims can do in trying to make uh, Islam the universal religion and beyond just the cultural context within within uh, within our uh, within our scope. So I would like to take this opportunity to pay tribute to him. And indeed, I am very fortunate uh, to meet uh, Brother Imam uh, Faisal again uh, two Ramadan ago when we decided at that particular point uh, with his presence to rename the rectory building as the Muhammad Abdul Rauf building, which is now uh, acronymed as Mar building. Uh, is known as the building within, within the university as the main building uh, and fittingly uh, to be dedicated to the first rector of the university and leaving his legacy behind for us to go back and get reminded of what this university is all about and how it could reach uh, beyond the shores of Malaysia into the global scope and indeed beyond that. So on that note, I would like to take this opportunity to thank uh, Professor Walid uh, to, for inviting me. I'm here really to learn from all the other scholars who have direct contacts with him, working closely with him, and to see what else that we can do in trying to make this name a synonym to IUM. And I would certainly like to thank uh, uh, Brother Imam Faisal, uh, who has been in contact with me off and on uh, when he's in Malaysia, uh, discussing uh, the issues of Islam, not only uh, within Malaysia, but the global scope now that he has led another uh, dimension of what equivalent perhaps to what his father is trying to do, trying to position Malaysia, uh, okay, uh, Islam uh, in the United States, given the Cordoba initiative. We were working together at Al-Buhari University and then for a short while in Usim, uh, which is not an easy thing. Uh, because Usim uh, has a different point of view in terms of what we are trying to do together. Now that I am in IUM, uh, maybe we can uh, continue uh, this legacy uh, imam and see what else we can do together in trying to bring uh, Islam to its totality, as it were. And on this point, I would like to just uh, mention uh, about less than a week ago, when we organized the Himpunan uh, Solidarity Al Quds uh, together with uh, one of the Kulia in Pago uh, and uh, Syria Care uh, to make sure that we understand the issues of Palestine uh, as far as the, the last crisis is concerned. Uh, fortunately, uh, one of the speakers was Tun uh, Mahade, and Tun Mahade, in his elaboration, uh, talks about the new, new new narrative that we need to talk about as far as uh, Palestine is concerned, if at all we were to quote unquote his term win uh, the sort of struggle between the Palestine and, 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 and Zionists. And he's, in his words, he said, I want to propose that IIUM became, become the place where this narrative should be crafted and passed back to the students, the hundreds of international students in IIUM, so that this narrative could be the new narrative that we will now fight for in trying to arrive at a free Palestine, as it were. And immediately, in my mind, uh, Professor Walid comes to mind. Uh, I thought the International Institute of Muslim Unity should be the very place where we now need to craft this new, new narrative, as it were. It has been uh, in, 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 in my consideration uh, for, for a while now. I think we need to talk about uh, this, how IUM and the struggle of that Palestine could be put together and perhaps using uh, the uh, writings of uh, uh, Professor Abu Rauf, we can actually find a, a nice position 
of how this could be actually located within the university. So there is more work to be done uh, given the inspiration that the first rector has given us. And I do hope that this meeting today will bring us a lot more uh, baraka in terms of constructing a new ideas of what this university ought to be within the, its grasp uh, post-pandemic particularly. And hopefully we will work together uh, to move the university forward uh, as much as is required as far as the mission and the vision of the university is concerned. I would, I would like to take the, this opportunity also to uh, seek some uh, opinions from you as to where the university ought to go, uh, given where we are now as far as as far as IUM is concerned. So on that note, uh, thank you very much. Uh, we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, that uh, our first rector, uh, Muhammad Abdul Rauf, uh, is blessed and put in the highest station of paradise that all of us Amen. should benefit from his legacy. And inshallah, we will do as much as we could in trying to fulfill some of the dreams that the university is trying to arrive at. Wabillahi Taufiq wa Hidayah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Thank you very much. Waalaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You need to mute the Prof. Walid. Unmute that. It's okay. Thank you very much, Tansiri Rector, for for this short mass speech. Uh, relating the legacy of uh, Tansili Professor Abdul Rauf to the uh, new perspective also uh, uh, and the new narration that uh, we would like to have IUM to be in uh, in the future. Um, um, uh, now the, our second speaker is uh, our third director uh, in the International Islamic University, uh, Tansili Professor uh, Muhammad Kamal Hassan. I have also a CV. I, will, uh, I, I know that he doesn't like also long yeah. CV. But no CV. Uh, uh, but I, I should I mention when you were born or no need because you mentioned this. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you can mention. <laughs> and Pasir Mas, Pasir Mas. <laughs> Pasir Mas Klantan, yes, you have to mention. <laughs> yes, yes. That, <laughs> that, is a, that is a very expensive sand for your information, Dr. Wally. <laughs> that is a, the golden sand. Yeah. <laughs> golden sand, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Professor Kamal Hassan was born in Pasir Mas, uh, Clinton, uh, 1942, and he had his bachelor's degree uh, in uh, Islamic studies from the University of Malaya, and then his uh, master and uh, MPhil, and PhD all from Columbia University, United States, uh, New York. And his area of specialization is contemporary Islamic thought, with special reference to Southeast Asia. Um, um, he was, he held many positions, uh, ending uh, as a rector of the International Islamic University. And then now he is an advisor for not only centers, but he's an advisor to many other organizations within Malaysia. And uh, he is also on the board of many other organizations uh, within uh, Malaysia. Um, I think uh, uh, Professor Kamal Hassan has a lot of contribution. He followed the steps of uh, uh, the great uh, people who have been uh, heading the university also. And uh, he, had, um, uh, he had written many books, uh, both in Malay and in English, uh, all related uh, to Islam, uh, related to uh, modernity, and also the engagement between Islam and modernity in Southeast Asia, and also internationally. And uh, his, uh, uh, one of his latest, um, actually, uh, books, that considered uh, uh, a great uh, contribution is the three volume uh, uh, book published by uh, IUM and also uh, UITM, I think. It's uh, entitled Natural Science from World View of Quran. Uh, this is uh, actually uh, the, uh, I, would, I would say, it's uh, a work that everybody was looking for for a long time and it will uh, lay the foundation for people who uh, would like to have Islamic perspective of science uh, uh, for the coming uh, few years. Uh, without uh, further uh, delay, I would like to invite uh, Professor Kamal Hassan to deliver his speech. Uh, on this topic. Thank you very much. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah rahman rahim Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay, alhamdulillah. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen, 
Wassalatu wassalamu ala ashrafil anbiya wal mursalin Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma'allamtana Innaka anta al-alimul hakim Wa la hawla wa la quwata illa billahi al-alil azim Our respected uh, president of IUM, uh, Dr. Daud Bakar Uh, our my colleague um, and uh, rector of uh, our university, Professor Emeritus uh, uh, Dr. Zulkifli Amber Razak, um, Yang Berbahagia Datuk Wan uh, Muhammad, uh, and um, uh, my dear brother Imam Faisal. <laughs> I've not met you for quite some time now. Uh, hopefully, you can meet again, inshallah. Inshallah. Uh, Yeah, in the near future. And of course, uh, finally, last but not least, that was three Dr. Uh, Zamri Abdul Qadir, who uh, I consider uh, represents uh, the voice of uh, the first batch of IIUM students, the pioneers, the, uh, uh, the wonderful pioneers of IIUM uh, who, um, who are uh, students of uh, Dr. Abdul Rauf, uh, Tansfi Dr. Abdul Rauf. Um, let me first of all uh, express my gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, for it is by his grace and by his mercy that I'm able to be here tonight. Uh, I am uh, undergoing a self-imposed, um, what do you call it, uh, uh, quarantine <laughs> because uh, of the environment in my area is, is, uh, is quite... Uh, Uh, heavily infested with the um, COVID-19. So I have to protect myself and stay, I've been staying indoors for the last uh, three weeks. Um, but uh, Alhamdulillah, it's nice uh, uh, to, to, to see my colleagues one again. And then I have at the back, uh, the, uh, you know, the South China Sea, uh, not far away from Klantan. Um, Well, again, I have to also uh, express my gratitude to Prof. Walid uh, for, um, you know, organizing this uh, webinar and, um, and, uh, and inviting me to say a few words. Um, okay, then I, let me just uh, uh, share with you what I have uh, uh, noted here. Uh, Alhamdulillah, by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I am among the most fortunate students of Tansri Muhammad Abdul Rauf, uh, who had been in, con who had been, uh, in I had been in contact with, with Al Marhum from 1963 uh, until 2002, in four periods of my academic uh, life. Uh, the first contact was in 1963, when I was a first year student in the University of Malaya, and he was the head of the Department of Islamic Studies. So he was teaching us basic Arabic in the first term and Islamic history, uh, as well as Quran and Sunnah to the senior students among them uh, was uh, Ton um, Abdullah Badawi. Uh, so he taught him history and Quran and, science, uh, and uh, Hadith sciences. We were very impressed with his congenial personality his pleasant uh, demeanor and his teaching method, which made learning Arabic fun and easy. Uh, Arabic is not easy, but he made it easy, <laughs> alhamdulillah. Uh, then the second contact happened in New York City when I was studying at Columbia University from 1968 until the end of 75. Tansri Muhammad Abdul Rauf was the director and imam at the uh, Islamic Cultural Center in Manhattan Uh, his family was living on the third floor together with uh, Imam Faisal, uh, or I call him Brother Faisal, um, of the Islamic Cultural Center. And because I knew his son, Brother Faisal, as my good friend, since he was studying at Victoria Institution, and I was there in form lower six, upper six from 1960 and 61, and Brother Faisal was staying in Davidson House, used to come and take lunch at the hostel Uh, of VI, and that's how we came to know him. And we used to play with his, with his hair, because he had uh, black hair, 
uh, you know, but of course he was handsome as, as ever, but we used to play with the black. Now we don't find any strand of black hair on his wonderful head. Um, he was, um, okay. Uh, so I was often invited by Brother Faisal to have refreshment or meals in the house. And Brother Faisal was studying uh, physics at that time at Columbia University, uh, and he graduated in physics. Uh, and then he was a president of the MSA, and he used to organize uh, activities. I was involved in the activities. And um, as a friend of Faisal, I look forward to being invited to his house because his mother, the late uh, 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 Kwan Sri Buthayna, was a great cook. And uh, she spoke Malay fluently, uh, like a local Malay. And of course, she cooked also, she could cook. Uh, uh, Malay dishes with balachan and you know all that. Um, uh, I really enjoyed my relationship with uh, Tansri uh, Abdul Rauf, Brother Faisal, and the other family members. I remember Aisha and uh, Salwa, uh, Al Marhum Ali, and of course Dr. Ayman, uh, the younger son. Uh, the relationship with uh, with Tansri Abdul Rauf was interrupted after he was transferred to become the new director of Islamic Center in Washington, DC. However, I remember a tragic event when he was the Imam in Washington. I'm sure Brother Faisal remembers this very well. It was when the uh, Islamic Center was forcibly brought under the control of pro-Iranian dissidents and Tansri uh, Abdul Rauf was detained for some time by the intruders, but thank God, the intervention of the Washington police safe uh, Tansri Abdul Rauf and the Islamic Center. After that incident, the pro-Iranian dissidents started to offer their Friday prayers in the street outside uh, the center, even in winter. And I used to see those people praying uh, with, uh, in the snow uh, just to you know, um, send a message that they were against uh, the center. And in fact, they were representing the revolutionary movement of Imam of Khomeini uh, in Iran. Uh, my third contact with uh, Tansi Abdul Rauf, which proved to be the most important and most enduring as far as I was concerned, was when he became the first rector uh, of IUM in October 1987. I was no longer a student. Um, Datu Sri Zamri became a student. <laughs> Uh, but uh, an academic staff of the new International Islamic University. With his experience as the principal of College Islam Malaya, uh, Dr. Baka mentioned that it was a principal, it was a first uh, principal with, uh, with Dr. Zaki Badawi, uh, also with him, and uh, I think also um, Sas Qandil, and then later on also uh, Nick Mahyuddin Musa and others. Um, in, the, in the college. Um, uh, so with his experience as the principal of the college, as head of the Department of Islamic Studies uh, and uh, professor of uh, Islamic Studies in the university in Al Ain before he came to Malaysia, uh, uh, Tansi Abdul Rauf was the right choice uh, as mentioned by uh, Dr. Dr. Daoud. He was the right man at the right place at the right time to be the first rector of, of, or vice chancellor of IUM, which was at that time for the information of uh, uh, Tansri Zul was following for, for the first uh, five years, we were following the British system, uh, not the American systems. Only after uh, Dr. Abdul Hamid came that he introduced uh, the American system and then we were following the American system. Uh, but anyway, uh, both uh, British or American, they were all colonizers and anyway, so uh, now Tansi Abdul Rauf uh, was well known to many people. I think basically it, because of his personality and I think I'm sure Faisal can speak a lot about his, his dad's personality. It's a, it's a natural thing. Uh, he, he, I say congenial, humble, uh, very tolerant, forgiving um, and so on. Um, because, because of his reputation as an international Islamic scholar from Al-Azhar, and Al-Azhar was highly respected, not just in Malaysia, but in, in, in the whole of Southeast Asia. And uh, 
he got a PhD from, from London University. Of course, he studied at Cambridge and then got a PhD in London. And he could speak English and French fluently. But Tansir Abdullah never showed, I never remembered him speaking French or trying to show that he knew French, but he was very fluent in French. Um, and he was highly regarded by the late Tunku Abdul Rahman, Ton Abdul Razak, and Ton Hussein on three prime ministers. And if you include uh, Dr. Um, uh, Dr. Mahade, that will uh, four prime ministers. And if you include Ton Ahmad Badawi, it would be five prime ministers who used to consult him. But Tunku Abdul Rahman and Ton Abdul Razak, uh, he knew them very well. And uh, I remember the good time when I had, uh, when I was invited by, by the late Tansri uh, to accompany him uh, to pay a courtesy visit to Tunku Abdul Rahman in Penang. So we had a nice lunch with him, with, with Patai and uh, Blachan and all that. And Tunku was talking about so many things. So apparently uh, they knew each other very well. Um, uh, these three prime ministers, former prime ministers, knew of the significant contribution of uh, Tansir Abdul Rauf for the development and progress of Islamic religious education in Malaysia at the secondary and tertiary levels. Dr. Dr. Bakam uh, talked about this just now, how he tried to introduce um, and promote Islamic education uh, even under the British system. He was responsible for reforming the syllabi of Islamic religious knowledge in Malaysia's government schools. Sekolah Rendah, Sekolah Menengah, and then later on, of course, the university level. And his books, uh, written uh, in English on the teaching of Arabic, uh, Islamic history, and how Islam came to Southeast Asia and Malaysia, and Islamic thought, uh, were used in many Muslim countries. And at that time, even some of the British uh, uh, expatriates were also looking forward for his books, because they were published in, in English. It so happened that many of the academic staff of IUM uh, also had known him as an able administrator, come uh, Islamic scholar, and some were his former students, um, um, Ustaz uh, Shafi'i, um, uh, Ustaz Azali Nawawi, uh, Ustaz um, uh, Isma uh, Dr. Ismail Ibrahim, um, and of course, Tansri uh, Ahmad Ibrahim was his colleague in the University of Malaya, and many others. Um, so uh, he, he, uh, we fell at home, and he fell at home, and and that was good for the for the this fledgling uh, Islamic university. Um, in fact, he was liked by everybody because of his friendly, polite, gentle, simple, and humble personality. Throughout his career. He has demonstrated his great capacity for patience, perseverance, resilience, self-restraint, selflessness, and clemency. Clemency, he kept mentioning clemency because uh, while he was in, in Egypt and also in, in college Islam, there were people who were jealous of him and, and they had created all kinds of, of fitna against him to get him back uh, uh, to Egypt and not to allow him to stay in Malaysia, blah, blah, blah. But he, he forgave them. Uh, he was so clement. And I think at the end, I will explain why, why this is uh, uh, you know, part of his uh, uh, great personality. Uh, it was no wonder that he endeared very easily to the Malay staff uh, with them um, uh, because uh, he knew Malay culture very well, spoke Malay with them and had lived amicably amongst the Malay community for many years in Kelang and then later in Petaling Jaya. Uh, his wife and children, especially Brother Faisal, were also very popular with the local people. Of course, Brother Faisal, very popular, he, he speaks Malay. He can even speak uh, Kelantan dialect better than Tansri Zul. Uh, you can, you know, Faisal can speak Kelantan dialect uh, better than uh, uh, Dr. Daud Bakar. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he spoke Kelantan dialect with me in New York. Can you imagine that? <clears throat> um, okay, That's, okay. One, one incident, it was most unfortunate that a terrible thing happened to him in the first year of his residence in Section 17, Patalin Jaya. 
uh, Tansir al marhum made it his habit to drive by himself uh, before dawn to pray the Fajr prayer at the nearby College Islam Mosque. One morning, while he was about to drive the official car to the mosque, an intruder rushed up to him, pushed him out of the driver's seat, and got away with the new BMW that the government bought for his official use. Uh, we were relieved, though, to know that he was not injured in the incident as a robber sped away with a BMW. But it was certainly a traumatic experience for this gentle, humble, uh, and sincere rector. Alhamdulillah, he was not injured. And of course, uh, the, the university bought another car for him. Um, <laughs> in the first two years of his rectorship, uh, al marhum spent a lot of time communicating with heads of Muslim universities in the Arab world to make them aware of the existence of IUM in Malaysia and to inform them of the plans of the fledgling Islamic university. Then he planned to make several official visits to several higher education institutions in Kuwait, uh, Jordan, and UAE uh, to introduce IUM to them in the hope that academic or material assistance would be forthcoming uh, from uh, the affluent uh, Arab states. al uh, and myself, uh, al marhum Tansri Ahmad Ibrahim and myself were fortunate to be requested by uh, al marhum Tansri uh, Abdul Rauf to accompany him on this academic mission to Arab countries. Throughout the journey, uh, Tansri uh, Abdul Rauf was welcomed by the hosts and, uh, uh, were, uh, and, and, and he was able to impress them uh, as a profound thinker, as well as an exemplar of Islamic intellectuality, a polite diplomacy, uh, humility, and universal humanitarianism. Back in Malaysia, I remember enjoying becoming his assistant uh, when he paid a courtesy call to the late Tunku Abdul Rahman in Penang and had a nice lunch with Tunku, or, or whenever he went to Manara Petronas in Kuala, Kuala Lumpur to see the late Tun Hussein On, who was the first president of IAUM to get the former, uh, the former signature or to get his official approval to travel overseas. I used to accompany uh, um, Al Marhom. Um, uh, whenever he had some free time in his office in the temporary uh, Patalin Jaya campus of IUM, he never had a chance to, uh, to be the rector in, 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 in Gombak, but he did visit Gombak a few times after that. Um, and then we conferred upon him the, um, the uh, 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 Professor Emeritus, an honorary doctorate also. He, he would be quite, he would be quietly working on a book, a translation of his earlier works, a revision of his books on teaching of Arabic or some articles about Islamic issues. Uh, so whenever I went into his office, I would find him you know, working on some books and he would be uh, asking for Puan Arfa to get some books from the library and so on. So a typical uh, Islamic religious scholar. Uh, in addition to securing Al-Azhar's support uh, of IIUM by sending Arabic instructors and, and teachers uh, to IIUM, uh, Tansri uh, al, -Marhum, uh, al Marhum's tenure as the founding rector of IIUM helped to boost the ac academic credibility, uh, Islamic and international identity, and global ummatic relevance of the new university. With his wise and people-oriented leadership, uh, he was just the opposite of the authoritarian taskmaster. Uh, he left IUM after five years of pioneering leadership on a stable, peaceful, and conflict-free foundation. He stayed on in Malaysia for another two years as the academic advisor at Kuza in Kuala Trangano, thanks to the persistent persuasion of his beloved student uh, and College Islam Malaya pioneering alumnus, Tansri Dr. Yusuf Noor, who was a member of the Malaysian cabinet at that time. Uh, it should be noted that his greatest contribution to Malaysian religious education was during his first appointment in British Malaya in 1955 to become the principal of the Muslim College Malaya in Kelang. Um, and uh, many of the photos, um, um, I, I, I saw the pictures of, of Za'ba and, and, 
And Zabba uh, is very significant to IAM because he was the first person uh, in 1918 uh, or 27 when he brought up the idea of an Islamic university, uh, Subwah University, Dua Dalam Satu, two in one, religious and secular education in one. And then later on, of course, his idea was developed by Nku Umar, who came up with a big paper on Islamic University 1968 uh, conference. And all these facts should be known by our people so that uh, people not think that IUM was just the brainchild of someone who, uh, you know, uh, someone who came late into the, into the picture. Uh, the whole idea started with Zaba way back uh, in the early uh, um, 20s. Uh, so there are so many pictures of Zaba and and uh, and our Tansri. Um, it should be noted. Okay, I mentioned that he raised he raised the the academic status of the college in the eyes of Al Azhar, because he wanted uh, the stud his students to be able to get into Al Azhar uh, a, a postgraduate program, and he he managed to get that uh, later on. Um, he managed to get also, uh, he, he improved the curriculum. Of course, I think uh, uh, Dato, uh, Dato Wan Muhammad can tell you more because he was a direct student of Tansri in College Islam. I should um, mention that he improved the curriculum and produced quality graduates with PhDs from Al Azhar. Uh, Tansri, Ra'o, uh, Tansri Yusuf Noor, um, uh, Abdul Hamid uh, Othman, uh, Ismail Ibrahim, and uh, 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 Dr. Shukur, and, and many others, and uh, 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 a few more I cannot remember now, uh, got PhDs uh, from Al Azhar thanks to his uh, efforts to get uh, Al Azhar's uh, curriculum uh, um, upgraded. And then he uh, he helped to he helped the new nation of independent Malay, Malaya uh, to improve the quality of Islamic religious education. He wrote a few books in English and Arabic on Islamic history. Presented a series of lectures on English uh, uh, in in English uh, on Islam over the radio. I think there were about twenty five series over the radio, and this was appreciated by non Muslim listeners uh, in in Kuala Lumpur. He managed to, to persuade the government and the council of, of UM and the vice chancellor at that time. And when I was also a student, there was a professor Oppenheimer uh, to establish the Department of Islamic Studies. Uh, and I also have a picture in the book that I will show afterwards, uh, which uh, our, our brother Faisal had a great hand in the book. Uh, I will show the picture afterwards. Um, so he managed to uh, also to establish the Department of Islamic Studies in UM, but then he had to manage College Islam and Department of Islamic Studies at the same time. One in, uh, in, in Klang, the other in Patalin Jaya. So he was able to do this and he contributed to the development of both institutions. Um, then the, um, the first two prime ministers of independent Malaya used to seek his advice on religious matters and at least three ministers of education uh, looked up to him for consultation on Islamic educational matters. And I think the last one was uh, Dr. Sulaiman Daoud, the, the minister responsible for the establishment of, of IAUM in 1982-83. Uh, uh, he used to also uh, consult um, Tansri Abdul Rauf. Uh, Tun, Ahmad, uh, Tun Abdullah Ahmad Badawi, who was his student, and among the few first batch graduates of IIUM uh, of, of the Department of Islamic Studies has this to say about his former teacher. And I quote here, he was a scholar and a humanitarian who contributed immensely to the development of uh, Islamic studies in Malaysia and the development of a large class of ulamas steeped in the true Islamic tradition of being moderate and temperate. Uh, Tun Abdullah Badawi got it right. And I think he hit the nail on the, on the head. Moderate and temperate. But Dr. Abdul Rauf's wisdom and counseling and his concern for Malaysia, for which the country is grateful, has also helped many of us under his care to act responsibly when carrying out his, uh, our duties. 
Then uh, the fourth contact, I'm coming to the last uh, page now. Uh, the fourth contact was when I was given the task of becoming the third rector after Dr. Dr. Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman vacated the position at the end of 1999. Uh, both Brother Faisal and his parents used to come to Kuala Lumpur on vacation from 2000 until 2002. I considered myself, uh, I considered it my duty to provide uh, transport services of IUM to Almarhum or Puansri, uh, Almarhuma Puansri, whenever they required such services. And then to get materials for his writing purposes, uh, Almarhum always mentioned the name of the librarian, Puan Arfa, uh, to secure from the library whatever he needed in Arabic, English, or whatever. Uh, I would like to mention this is also what made people endeared to him, uh, not just to him, to the whole family. Unlike some Arab families, <laughs> some Egypt, uh, some Arab family, unlike some Arab families, uh, now he, uh, of course, Brother Faisal and Pwansri loved durian very much. I think Faisal would have durian uh, for breakfast, durian for lunch, durian for dinner. Uh, and, and Tansri also loved durian very much. Unlike some Arab uh, people like uh, Dr. Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman, who just uh, hates durian. You know? So you just cannot smell it. Uh, so you have two extremists here. And of course, we like anybody who likes durian. <laughs> I do not know which side is uh, Dr. Prof. Walid. Maybe you belong to Dr. Abdul Hamid's madhab. <laughs> moderate, Prof. Moderate. Uh, moderate. moderate. Okay, okay. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> okay. Uh, finally, let me say a few words about the nature of Tansri Abdul Rauf's personality. It would become obvious to those who get to know him up close that Tansri Abdul Rauf was a Sufi oriented Azhari scholar who not only memorized the Quran when he was 10 years old and grew up in a religious family, and his father was a, a Sufi sheikh of the local uh, tariqa. And, um, and when he was young, um, uh, Tansri, uh, I mean, um, yes, uh, Tansri would remember also the, the dhikr sessions in his house because his father was leading the dhikr sessions. So even as a child, he used to hear the vicar sessions of the disciples of his father, of the grandfather of, of Brother Faisal. In fact, the village they grew up in was also well known for Sufi uh, tariqa celebrations and traditions. To know a little bit more about the spiritual personality of Tansri Abdul Rauf, let us listen to what his son, Imam Faisal, who also inherited his father's uh, spiritual uh, genealogy, uh, in addition to his own adherence to uh, to another uh, Sufi tariqa uh, has this to say, and I'm quoting uh, from uh, Brother Faisal now. Dad was known for a religiosity steeped in and defined by deep spirituality and good ethics. It was not a piety that was self-serving, but that delighted in improving and transforming others towards their best behavior, overlooking their shortcomings. He was never vindictive. Remember the word clemency, clement. He was very clement a person. Uh, of course, this is a Sufi uh, characteristic. Uh, he was never vindictive, leaving those who wronged him to divine justice and considered his patience in the face of others' wrongdoings toward him as a means of drawing down upon him God's forgiveness for his own shortcomings. His years of work were marked by many delightful stories of how he sought to transform hatred into love, healing broken friendships and relationships. And, and then Faisal said, uh, I wish he had written more about this, but he could not speak about his own accomplishments without feeling that it was bordering on the sin of pride. Subhanallah. You know, he was concerned about riya, takabur, ujub, 
And these are all Sufi qualities. And, and uh, Tansri uh, was imbued with these qualities from very young age. So he carried this personality from the Nile to the Potomac. And with that, I'm going to show you the book that, uh, that should be, you know, uh, um, um, a, a standard reference uh, for uh, the life of, um, of um, can you see this? Can you see the book? No, we can't see it. That's your actor. You have to put in front of your face. Uh, yes. And your I have to put in front of my face? Yeah. Okay. Because okay. of the background, Prof. Yeah. Oh. Maybe, maybe the background is, is the reason for the, fact, oh, the, the, the background is a problem. Oh. Yeah. So I don't know how to. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Better. Mm. You have this to is... slanting it a bit. Slanting it a bit. Slanting a bit, yeah. Uh, no, I think we can see the ocean and the beaches. Maybe yeah, I'll but, get a copy but, of the book and show it. Sorry? Okay. Faisal, can you, can you show the book later? Yeah, I'll, I'll get a copy of the book and show it. Okay, good. Because you can see the, his picture there. But the title is Autobiography of an Azharite American from mm -hmm. the Nile to the Potomac. Okay. So in short, um, he was, to me, a bridge between the East and the West. And he, he really wanted to, 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 uh, to, to, to build that bridge uh, between the East and the West. Uh, so the East uh, is represented by Malaysia, Southeast Asia, uh, Egypt, uh, okay. and then the West, of course, America. So it, it's a great journey, uh, an Azaharite American from the Nile to the Potomac. And I, so this is, uh, to me, a very, very important work indeed. Uh, and, and Tansuri writes very well uh, in English. Um, Faisal must have help also, uh, but uh, he writes well even without Faisal's help. Um, I think uh, his French is better than Faisal's French. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's it. Um, thank you very much once again. Uh, I, I felt really honored to be able to speak about my great teacher. And uh, it's good that Tan Sri Zul, um, and also the, the president uh, suggested that we should also uh, be uh, reprinting uh, some of his uh, important works. I think the one on the Muslim mind is very important and uh, the, the history of Islam in Southeast Asia and Malaysia also very important. I think some of these books could be reprinted, um, inshallah. So thank you very much. Uh, and I look forward to listening from, from others and also from uh, Brother Faisal, inshallah. Qul qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaykum wa barakatuh. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Kamal Hassan, for this uh, um, overview of the uh, different stages with your engagement with uh, Professor Abdul Rauf. And uh, I think it's a lot of information, a lot of information. Uh, now uh, we'll move to uh, next speaker. Uh, our next speaker is uh, Dato Haji Wan Muhammad uh, Ibn Sheikh Abdul Aziz. In fact, uh, I would like just before mentioning the CV that uh, actually that one, uh, I, I met him uh, accidentally in, uh, in an iftar during Ramadan. And then uh, I, I was talking about uh, the forum that we are planning to do. And I really appreciate that his initiative, immediate initiative, that he is willing uh, to be part of it. And, uh, and with all... Uh, uh, humbleness. In fact, I know he has uh, a busy schedule doing many things, uh, but uh, he, he welcomed the idea uh, pretty much. And after this, we communicated until we managed to have this uh, uh, webinar. Uh, that one uh, uh, served and uh, he's serving currently in the, uh, he served in the religious uh, div uh, division of the Prime Minister's Department after graduating from University of Malaysia in 1978. Um, and he retired as the Director General of Jakim uh, in uh, 2011. In addition to his uh, Honours Bachelor degree uh, in Islamic Studies from UKM, uh, he has a Diploma in Education from the same university, a Diploma in Management uh, Science from INTAN, and he's a member of the British Institute of Management. Uh, before that also, he served as a Religious Attaché uh, at Malaysia, um, Malaysian High Commission in London. And also he, he, he was a director of the Darul Quran uh, Jakim, 
and director of research uh, division. Uh, after retiring as a director general, he served with many NGOs holding positions such as deputy chairman of the uh, Malaysian Ulama Association. And uh, he has been uh, a board member of IKIM for about eight years. And uh, in 2019, he was appointed as a guest academia uh, by USIM and currently is uh, the political secretary uh, to the Honorable Minister uh, and the Prime Minister's uh, Department, Islamic Affairs, Datu Sri Dr. Zulkifli Mohammed uh, uh, Al Bakri. Uh, I just, uh, I would like to conclude the CV. Uh, I met many people working with uh, uh, that one, and uh, usually uh, none of the people I have uh, met uh, will all, all of them will mention uh, his, uh, go his good behavior with them, uh, his support to all of them, which is a very nice thing from. Um, uh, a senior uh, uh, management person in different capacities uh, that people always remember his uh, good deeds. Uh, so uh, without uh, delay, I would like to invite him uh, for his speech. Uh, that one, please. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa man nasaruhu wa wala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi Thank you very much, Prof. Dr. Walid, the director of the International Institute for Muslim Unity, IIMU. I am so thankful for your kind introduction and your kind words really warm me, warm my heart, alhamdulillah. I feel very fortunate to be in this forum and I would like to congratulate IIUM especially my friend, uh, Yang Bagia Dato, Dr. Daud Bakar, the president of uh, IIUM. Yang Bagia Prof. Emeritus Tansri Zulkifli Abdul Razak, the director of IIUM. And of course, uh, IIMU for living our tradition and sunnah by glorifying knowledgeable people who spend all of his life encouraging people to love and to seek for knowledge. And uh, this is a legacy left by Almarhum Tansri Professor Dr. Muhammad Abdul Rauf, the first rector of IRUM, Alhamdulillah. And we are very lucky, the son of Almarhum, whom I know personally, uh, Imam Faisal Abdul Rauf, is joining us tonight, Alhamdulillah, brother. <laughs> Similarly, uh, my beloved Tuan Guru, uh, Yang Baga Prof. Emeritus Tan Sri, Dr. Muhammad Kamal Hassan, the former rector of IIUM, and Yang Baga Datuk Sri Diraja Dr. Zamri Amdul Qadir, the former MB of Perak, who is also an IIUM alumni. I was lucky because uh, during last Ramadan, <clears throat> last month of Ramadan, as mentioned by Dr. Walid, I sat next to him in an iftar ceremony organized by OIC study group. And he mentioned about Almarhum Tansri, uh, Dr. Muhammad Abdul Rauf, <clears throat> and asked me whether I was one of his students. I was wondering how could I become one of his students when I was just three years old in 1956, <laughs> when he already obtained his master's degree from Cambridge, University of Cambridge. <laughs> but as uh, an officer at Jakim for 30, 33 years, uh, Jakim stands for Department of Islamic Development of Malaysia. And Alhamdulillah, blessed to retire as Director General in 2011. I work closely with uh, academicians and scholars. And uh, I was also a secretary of LEPAI. Uh, LEPAI yang ni Lembaga Penasihat Penyelarasan Pelajaran dan Pendidikan Agama Islam. Uh, LEPAI is an institution that helps to coordinate Islamic religious education in Malaysia. LPI is a board appointed by Majlis Raja Raja, a conference of rulers, a council comprising of nine rulers of the Malaysian state and the governors or Yang Di Pertuan Negeri 
uh, of the other four states. Uh, coincidentally, the current chairman of LUPA is none other than Prof. Emeritus Tansri, Dr. Muhammad Kamal Hassan. Back to the stature and integrity of the Almarhum Tansri, Dr. Muhammad Abdurraouf. I know him better as a recipient of the National Ma'al Hijrah Award, which was presented by Yang Tipetuan Agong, King of Malaysia in 1990 Miladi or 1411 Hijri. Uh, this, this award was introduced in 1987 by Tansri Dr. Muhammad Yusuf No, Minister of Religious Affairs at that time. Uh, he also a murid uh, of the Almarhum Tansri in appreciation of outstanding uh, individuals who contributed enormously to the development of Islam in this country. And uh, the first recipient was Almarhum uh, Sheikh Muhammad Idris Al-Marbawi. And the second was received by Almarhum Professor Tansri Ahmad bin Muhammad Ibrahim in 1988. And the third was conferred to Tansri Dato S.O.K. Ubaidillah. Qadir Basha in 1989, and Almarhum Tansri Dr. Muhammad Abdul Rauf received the award in the following year. Uh, he was the very first non Malaysian to receive this uh, prestigious award, Alhamdulillah. Hmm. Since its inception of 33 years, uh, eight non Malaysian individuals uh, has received the award. Among other figures selected were Almarhum uh, Sheikh Dr. Wahbah Az Zuhaili in 2008, uh, Fadilatul Sheikh Dr. Yusuf Al Qaradawi in 2009, Fadilatul Sheikh Abdullah Al Mahfuz Bayya in 2019, and Al Imam Al Akbar Sheikh Dr. Ahmad Muhammad Al Tayyib Sheikh Al Azhar in 2020, last year. And uh, Jakim is the organizer and the secretariat of this award. And Alhamdulillah, Jakim published a book by the title, uh, they published in uh, 2006, uh, Biography Tokoh Ma'al Hijrah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Uh, from uh, 1987 to 2005. And of course, my Tuan Guru, Tansi Dr. Kamal, uh, his name is not here because he received after that, <laughs> after <laughs> 2005. <laughs> and mashallah, generally speaking, uh, Malaysian knows Almarhum Tansri Dr. Muhammad Abdul Rauf in the field of Islamic education in Malaysia and his exposure in the uh, Middle East, West and Far East contribute uh, greatly to the development of Islamic education in Malaysia, Alhamdulillah. And uh, <clears throat> sorry, I'm still lucky to be able to study with his student from the Muslim College of Malaya or College Islam Malaya. Uh, many of my guru, our professors mentioned about College Islam Laya, and his name is engraved not only in the history of College Islam Laya, but also left a lasting impact in University of Malaya, IIUM, KUZA, uh, College University uh, Sultan Zainal Abidin, which now known as UNIZA, University Sultan Zainal Abidin in Trangan. And Alhamdulillah, Tansri Dr. Muhammad Abdul Rauf, a man who explored, founded, and led the major educational institution in Malaysia during his time. You just mentioned which his name is there. And Alhamdulillah, together with his two close friends, uh, uh, Tansri uh, Dr. Kamal also did mention before, uh, who also happened to be from Egypt, 
Dr. Zaki Badawi and Sheikh Takudil Qandil, Rahimahullah, Rahmatan Wasi'a, and other Malaysian uh, education hero, uh, like Nko Omar, Amanuddin Baki, Burhanuddin Halmi, Zulkifli Muhammad, and many, many others. They founded College Islam Laya in 1955, just two years before the independence of Malaya from British. And he also uh, established the Department of Islamic Studies at the University of Malaya in 1959. Yeah. After returning to Egypt and moved to USA and returned to Malaysia as the first uh, rector uh, for UIA, uh, IIUM in 1983. And with his uh, extensive experience in 1988, he was appointed as academic advisor for KUZA, an Islamic college uh, of Terangganu State. As an extraordinary educator, it is no surprise that Almarhum is honored with awards and is respected by the people of Malaysia and uh, various institutions. And uh, IIUM uh, conferred him an honorary doctorate of philosophy in 1999. And other than that, and before that, in 1986, His Majesty, the King of Malaysia, Yang Diputuan Agong, honored him with an award called PSM, Panglima Setia Mahkota, or Commander of the Order of Loyalty to the Crown of Malaysia which was the highest award given to, to a non-Malaysian. The recipient, as we know, of this award received the title of Tan Sri and his wife, Puan Sri. And Alhamdulillah, Almarhum Tan Sri Dr. Muhammad Abdul Rauf was one foreign-born educator who left massive contribution to our institution. And Malaysia had always engraved in his heart Masha'Allah. And he was an influential and inspirational academic whose far-reaching aura can still be left today. May Allah grant him the highest level of Jannah for his contribution of the Ummah. Allahumma ameen. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. And thank you very much. Thank you very much. <coughs> uh, thank you very much, uh, Batuan, for this uh, oh. nice uh, uh, overview of the contribution also of uh, Tansiri Professor uh, Muhammad Abdul Rauf, and also uh, an overview. And this is one of the main also main objective of this seminar is the overview of the Islamic education in Malaysia in general. It's part of the Islamic education in Malaysia in general, and the contribution of many people to it, whether uh, Malaysian and non-Malaysian as well. Uh, to the Islamic education in the country. Uh, without uh, delay, um, I would like uh, to move to uh, Datu Sri Raja uh, Dr. Zamri Abdul Qadir. Um, I will just also mention a few lines. In fact, uh, you don't have you don't have to, to mention. Just mention <laughs> a former student of IIU. Zamri <laughs> 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 doesn't need an introduction. He's known all over Malaysia. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, uh, maybe he, he doesn't know, but uh, his team invited me a couple of times to Bangkok Dialogue. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was wondering always uh, uh, how a politician would engage into an intellectual discussions and encourage people to, uh, uh, to engage into intellectual discussion. <laughs> when, I, when I see the CV, now I know why. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know at this time, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> Uh, uh, Dr. Azamri Abdul Qadir uh, is um, uh, actually, he was uh, uh, Chief Minister of Pira from 2008 up to 2018, and uh, uh, who fostered bottom up and inclusive policies that prioritize the middle income uh, group for opportunities in employment and uh, social improvement. Um, uh, also, uh, Dr. Zamri uh, was frequently invited to share his experience and insight. Uh, through public and academic uh, lectures. Uh, he was adjunct professor at IUM in Malaysia and also professor uh, of practice in uh, Putra Business School, UPM. 
during his tenure, uh, the state was named the most promising uh, state uh, at, uh, for international uh, investment. Um, uh, education of uh, Dr. Zamri, um, uh, of course, the uh, uh, bachelor from the International Islamic University in 1987, and then uh, master uh, in Islamic thought from the International also Islamic University in 1991, and then uh, master in political uh, philosophy and comparative religion uh, from the well-known Temple University in the United States, which many uh, great scholars have graduated from and PhD also from Temple University, the same university uh, in uh, 1996 in political, uh, political uh, thoughts. Um, there are many awards. Uh, there's a very long list of many awards. But the interesting thing is um, actually uh, that caught my interest in fact, because it's uh, rare among uh, people who are working in politics that you can balance between politics academic work, and also uh, business type. So it's, uh, it's a, very, a very good example, in fact, I think. Uh, and uh, IOM should be proud of having uh, a graduate uh, like him uh, uh, in, in, in the field of uh, politics and the field also of business and many, uh, many other uh, things. And uh, of course, currently, uh, uh, Dr. Zamri is actually uh, the chairman of Malaysian Airport Holding uh, Berhard. Uh, without uh, delay, I would like to invite him to uh, to deliver his speech. Thank you very much. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Brother D Professor Walid, uh, for your kind uh, gesture of introduction. Bismillah uh, ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaikum salam. Actually, I'm uh, intellectually and morally energized tonight. Um, <laughs> present for my tea, Professor Kamal, <laughs> and also uh, uh, the, uh, the, in the presence of the rest of the guests tonight. So um, let me briefly uh, uh, read my 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 some of my uh, notes here um, uh, for the purpose of uh, uh, trying to to share some of the reflection I have. Upon one of the uh, upon the uh, Tansri Muhammad Abdul Rauf, uh, um, history has always shown that significant history makers will uh, will have the privilege of being uh, celebrated and remember. And uh, Tansri uh, Professor Muhammad Abdul Rauf is one of those uh, celebrated and remembered in the annals of uh, IAUM. Firstly, um, I must say uh, that I do not want to dwell too much on Tansri's personal life. Professor Kama already mentioned this now. Um, and his numerous and illustrious career. Um, uh, I believe uh, our other esteemed speakers have shared many remarkable achievements and extensive information about him. They are all interesting, valuable, and insightful. Uh, instead, uh, I would like to bring you on the journey uh, of the very best moment I have with him, a uh, moment which shaped who I am today, moments which remind us of his great legacy. Uh, Prof, uh, Prof Kama just now really shared some of his uh, legacies with us. And my reflection on uh, Tan Sri uh, uh, Muhammad Rauf is my rector of IIUM uh, is probably uh, not as deep as others. I started off as a pioneer student of IIUM or University of Islam Antarabangsa. Uh, Prof. Um, Rauf always mentioned you know, University Islam Antarabangsa. Uh, he seldom mentioned IIUM. Uh, he liked to speak Malay. Um, on the day of his arrival, uh, Prof. Rauf, as he is uh, fondly called by all of us, um, show immensely and extremely uh, his uh, fatherly expression and figures uh, to all of us. Uh, his, uh, <laughs> I remember his strong Arabic tongue uh, accentuated in his Malay pronunciation, uh, such as apa um, kabar semua, apa apa nama dari mana, 
So uh, <laughs> that's uh, really lingering in our mind of, uh, you know, uh, you can really uh, see this is the, um, uh, the real person in him, a real father in him. Uh, but uh, we were very comforted in a time when no one could speak Arabic or proper English, just myself. I, I remember I started with zero English and, uh, and zero Arabic. Uh, there, <laughs> Prof, Prof Kama can testify this. <laughs> um, there we have uh, the first rector of the newly formed university who was able to converse in Malay, English, and Arabic fluently. Um, as the world was gradually opening the gate of glo globalization in 1980s, uh, it was Professor Rauf who actively demonstrated uh, the importance of mastery languages. Um, his fluent Malay, English, and Arabic inspired us to master different languages, which went a long way in bridging cultural gaps and breaking barriers of communication. Imagine there was a time uh, when we found very difficult to pronounce some of the Arabic words. Uh, to, to differentiate between seen and sheen, if uh, Prof uh, and recall, uh, one of our friends like Hossein Solomon, uh, because he speaks a very, very, very strong Japanese accent. And uh, to, to, you know, for the Japanese tongue, it's very difficult to, uh, to, to really pronounce uh, she, she, she. <laughs> uh, So um, that's where we learn also from, uh, from Professor Rauf. Uh, keep on emphasizing uh, to ask us to repeat, uh, repeat and repeat. Finally, uh, Hussein Solomon managed to, to pronounce it uh, uh, correctly. And um, as a Malaysian, uh, we heard a lot about uh, the tales of Professor Rauf uh, through his student. Recently, uh, I, I called by Tan Sri Professor uh, Tan Sri Yusuf Noor and uh, Dr. Dasuki Ahmad. Uh, there's one of uh, those are the uh, uh, students of uh, Professor. They really adore him. Um, he was with the first principal of College Islam Klang, the director of his, uh, College Islam Malaya, and later the first rector of IIU. Uh, imagine a time when uh, Malaysia was at the stage of infancy under the tutelage of Prof, uh, Prof Rauf. Uh, thousands of students were produced which helped shape the foundation of our newly independent nation. In other words, he was truly Murabi. It's a real reflection uh, as Murabi. He's a real educator, very pious and wise, as Professor Kamal uh, noted just now, and also very considerate. Uh, in in Al-Ghazali's uh, Ghazali's term, he was the real Murabi. Uh, who really bestows the uh, mercy to his students, transmit the right knowledge uh, to the right recipients, uh, remind students of the role of uh, akhlaq and, and self-purifications. Uh, and, and also one, uh, one of the interesting uh, in the character of uh, Prof. Rahul, so, so he never ridiculed his students. Interestingly, those who graduated from uh, College Islam and IUM uh, are not uh, only the Ustaza or Asertiza, but they are the real professionals, lawyers, engineers, doctors, scientists, and of course, religious scholars. When I was the um, ex school members of PERA in uh, 2004, I think uh, uh, before his passing in December, if I'm not mistaken, uh, I mean, I met uh, Professor Rauf uh, a couple of times. Uh, he was always happy to see many IIU uh, graduates holding senior positions in government. Uh, at that time, I remember he was working on the, tra on the translation. He wanted to publish one uh, translation work, uh, or rather a classic work by uh, one of the Muslim scholars. I can't remember the title of the work. He wanted to find it. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, uh, it was... Um, the work of, um, of a Muslim scholars of the 13th century. I'm not sure whether Prakama remember. Uh, do remember. Or, 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 the, or Brother Faisal remember the work because it, it, it was already published now. Uh, he was looking for someone to publish this work. It was already translated into, into English. Uh, mm. it was, I still remember it was a 13th century uh, work by one of my Muslim scholars. 
Um, as a, uh, certainly Prof, uh, Prof Rauf in his uh, in, in years of educating thousands of Malay uh, have shaped the brightest mind of our time. And Malaysia is blessed today with generations and generations of excellent citizens contributing uh, in one way or another to the betterment of society. I um, recall uh, in the formative years of uh, IIUM, uh, majority of academics in CFK, for example, uh, Center for Fundamental Knowledge, were the former students of Professor Rauf, <laughs> Prof. Kamal, uh, uh, Ustaz Mokhtar Shafi'i, uh, and I think Allah Yarham Ustaz uh, Dawood, Muhammad Dawood, if I'm not mistaken, I was one of the, uh, the members. I remember in that early years, we were struggling to find the best curriculum that later came under the Islamization of knowledge. I was enjoying the debate of what constitutes the right definition of knowledge and how to integrate uh, modern sciences with, with Islam. Uh, of course, uh, now Dr. Professor Kama is one of the architects uh, of the university the, uh, um, in terms of uh, the curriculum and the philosophy uh, the, and the philosophical foundation of the university. Uh, Professor Rauf, in my humble observation, uh, represented the traditionally school that strongly attached to uh, the uh, Azhari. Uh, um, that, uh, the, this helped actually, uh, IIUM, uh, which is formed uh, to unite uh, the Muslim Ummah and to produce the generations of uh, problem solvers. Uh, to the contemporary Malays of the Ummah. I remember the word Malays of the Ummah at that time was uh, repeatedly mentioned by Professor Kamal and the rest. And of course, it was also imbued uh, with the message of Islam. We have to do, you know, to, to carry uh, the message uh, of, of, of Tajdeed and uh, uh, under the banner of Al-Amr bin Maru and Nahyan al Munkar. Uh, so, the, <laughs> The, those are the, uh, uh, the the real mottos for uh, for the uh, for the uh, IIU student at that time. However uh, difficult for, for us to understand or to pronounce it, uh, <laughs> but uh, thank you, women uh, <laughs> to understand and to translate it into our our daily life. Alhamdulillah. Nevertheless, uh, uh, Prof. Rauf uh, never dictated uh, any rigid form of instruction, as he believed that uh, Muslims must be prepared to face the challenges ahead. His life in America and Malaysia could have also shaped his intellectual tolerance. Of course, there were uh, other uh, thinkers uh, representing the different school of thought, uh, but this, this uh, principle of intellectual tolerance uh, is growing uh, uh, in importance in this uh, day that, and age. Uh, indeed, intellectual tolerance acts as a highly essential foundation uh, for the existence of healthy Malaysian democracy with multilingual, multi-religious, and multicultural communities. The uh, openness to listen to and to evaluate uh, one another's argument through logical and scientific methods is the hallm uh, hallmark of a major society. And that is why I thank uh, Prof. Rauf for being a beacon of uh, intellectual tolerance, for building the foundation for a healthy academic environment of rich knowledge discourse. My uh, study years uh, at URA uh, mark the rise of the Islamic movement as well. And naturally, our ideal search uh, for the best form of government uh, became the main uh, preoccupation. Critic against the government's uh, inadequacy and weaknesses was normal and in fact celebrated. <laughs> I think Prakama, I'm not saying that Prakama is, is responsible, if I'm not <laughs> one responsible for it. <laughs> we were asked to live in the ideal, ideal state. Hmm. And, <laughs> and the government said always ran deep really run deep in the life of university students. That's not only applicable to, uh, to URA, but also to uh, other universities surrounding us, especially uh, UM, uh, for the better or, or for worse. 
uh, issues of Islam uh, were the most sensitive among all. We remember the day Tunku Abdul Rahman, our former PM, uh, this is the other side of Tunku, uh, has said that the stoning of people accused of adultery uh, was not suitable to be practiced in Malaysia. If Rokamas do remember that moment, well, I guess. Uh, in response to his remark, I, I used students stage a demonstration. Uh, Prof. Rauf, or rather, was in a very difficult situation indeed. Um, he wasn't pleased with the way the demonstration uh, was conducted on campus, not off campus. Um, finally, finally, he used, he used his, uh, his mediation skill. Uh, to call student, uh, to call student leaders and some of the students to sit down uh, with him. Uh, upon his plea, uh, finally we we ended the demo. <laughs> In this uh, incident, uh, we learned a few lessons from Prof. Rao's excellence in mediation. Firstly, his ability to actually pacify the situation, and particularly. Uh, listen uh, to the uh, grouses of the students and promote an amicable solution uh, was truly inspiring. Secondly, the approach of not imposing authority, uh, which uh, would automatically suppress voices and expression from students is crucially important. The students may not be, may not be right, but to allow them to express themselves is necessary. This is a, a maturing process for all, and Prof. Rauf understood this very well. Thirdly, as we all know, mediation is one of those rare processes that is both a science and an art form, and no better person aptly balanced this as Prof. Rauf. He demonstrated the balance in ways that will encourage others to contemplate further. One good characteristic of Professor Rauf is that he always makes time uh, to walk along the old wooden block building to join in the tutorial classes uh, for those uh, the, 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 the early batch we uh, still remember uh, the, how the wooden uh, block looked like. The law classes were fortunate because Prof. Rauf took some subject to teach. Uh, for our economic students, because I, I'm from economics uh, faculty, uh, he thought as uh, Arabic uh, as well as uh, occasionally uh, he gave lecture on, on Islamic economics. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, he, uh, he did also right on, uh, on, on Islamic economy and contemporary thought on Islamic economy as well. Um, as, a, as a leader of the, of the university, uh, he was always actively on the ground, interacting with students and getting as close as possible to the daily activities surrounding our academic world. Uh, he modeled the role of a humble and engaging leader. His humility continued to inspire us. During the formative years of IIUM, there were uh, three main personalities who became the main pillar, Professor Ra Rauf, Prof. Kamal, and Professor Ahmad Ibrahim. And uh, of course, uh, there are others as well who are uh, equally contributing the, to, the, uh, to the image of uh, IIUM uh, later on. And um, we are more than lucky to have Prof. Kama with us today. They were brilliant, soft-spoken, very attached to the students and very biased. All were down to us, despite their academic credentials. They are very philosophy of uh, IIUM. For me, they are IIUM. They are the asabiqoon al-awwalun. Then they are also uh, very, very responsible uh, to IIUM. 
they give their life to IIUM. And um, lastly, before I end, I can proudly say that Prabhupada's models of uh, servant-based leadership continue to shape the way I serve the people today. Mm. That is always about being humble, approachable and engaging, learning from each other and every person I meet, learning from the very best Professor Rauf. And I have uh, nothing but continuous prayer for Professor Rauf. Thank you very much for uh, listening to some of the thought that I have uh, written down here uh, in remembering our uh, uh, great uh, uh, intellectuals, great scholars, Professor Rauf. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Wa alaikum salam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Sri Daraja, Dr. Zemri. Uh, I think uh, uh, you touched on a very important aspect, the leadership aspect of uh, Professor Rauf and how it impacted the students, uh, the organization, and many other things. And that it's really uh, very touching. Thank you very much. Uh, now uh, we move to uh, uh, Imam Faisal, Khitamu uh, Misk. <laughs> where, is, where, is my, where is my mask? <laughs> so uh, also I am I'm really, uh, I really appreciate Imam Faisal when I contacted him. Also, I know he has a lot of things on his schedule. Uh, he was immediately, uh, he said, okay, let's arrange a call. And we spoke for almost uh, about uh, two hours, actually on the phone, uh, detailing what we are planning to do and uh, his also uh, views and his, um, uh, he has many issues. And one of the things that he suggested, I might, uh, I might uh, say here also, uh, in the presence of our president and our rector, he said uh, it, uh, it would be a good idea to have uh, a wider scope of research that talks about the uh, um, history of Islamic education in, in Malaysia and uh, the people who contributed to it, whether Malaysian and non-Malaysian. I think uh, this is a, a very good suggestion. So Imam Faisal Abdul Rauf is the founder and president of Cordoba House, uh, which has a purpose to establish a compassionate, forward-thinking and pluralistic American Muslim identity. Uh, he has engaged in outreach uh, moderate or um, uh, in outreach to moderates of all faith uh, traditions, engaging in interfaith dialogue. Uh, he is the author of several books, actually I read a couple of them, um, but I will look to uh, read all of them, <laughs> inshallah. <laughs> I mentioned to him what I've read and what I didn't, uh, has, I was not fortunate to read yet. Uh, one of them is uh, Defining Islamic Statehood, uh, Measuring and Indexing Contemporary Muslim States and also uh, what is right about uh, Islam and many other books. Um, he is a former Imam of uh, Masjid Al-Farah, a mosque located in Lower Manhattan. And uh, uh, he preached a message of understanding between people of all faiths, traditions. Uh, Imam Faisal also served on the board of trustees for the Islamic Center of New York, served as an advisor for the Interfaith Center of New York, and member of the World uh, Economic Forum Council of 100 leaders, Islamic West uh, uh, dialogue. Um, uh, a leading mo uh, voice in moderation, and uh, he also appeared um, uh, frequently on the Council of Foreign Relations and the World Economic Forum, uh, Davis. Um, he, he is quite popular, of course, on the uh, media in the United States. Uh, you just put his name and you'll find many <laughs> CNN and also ABC, Fox News, uh, he is uh, quite a popular figure uh, in many of the media in the United States. Um, Imam Faisal received uh, numerous uh, awards, including Search for Common Ground Award for Interfaith Diplomacy in 2012, uh, and Ariana Huffington uh, to 2010 Game Changer Award. Time Magazine named him among the uh, top 100 most influential people in the world in 2011. And he was listed also as one of the top 100 global thinkers in 2010 by uh, Foreign Policy Magazine, which is, of course, a very uh, well-known and established uh, magazine. 
uh, born in Egypt and uh, educated in England, Egypt, Malaysia, and also spent his time uh, time in Kuwait. Uh, so Imam Faisal, uh, he actually present diversity himself, and he lived diversity uh, all all over his life. And uh, um, uh, I think uh, uh, he is also uh, the, uh, um, the the current uh, head of the uh, Sufi Association in uh, in uh, in United States. Uh, that he was one of the founders of, uh, uh, of this. Uh, without uh, delay, I, I would like to invite uh, Imam Faisal to uh, present his uh, speech and thoughts about his father and uh, about Islamic education also in, in Malaysia. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Uh, Walid. Uh, to my dear brothers and all of you, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. wa 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 <clears throat> um, you know, while listening to all of you talk, I was reminded of an old song, which was a very popular hit when in the late 50s or 60s. I don't remember the whole song, but I remember this, this line from the song, Masa yang lalu ta'osa di kanang, jika di kanang, air mata pun berlenang. Oh. So my air mata was berlenang in while, while you're all talking about your memory. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> um, uh, on behalf of my family, I wish to thank you all for holding this uh, marvelous event to highlight my father's contribution and legacy to Islamic education in Malaysia. Uh, all of us are indeed deeply grateful and honored for this, uh, for this gesture. Uh, my specific thanks go to the hosts of this event, starting with the Honorable Rector, Tansin Professor Zul, uh, as we call him. Professor Oled Ferris, uh, to our sister Nur Rouhani Aziz, and all of those involved in arranging the logistics of this event. Of course, my, to my dear brother, Professor Muhammad Kamal Hassan, you know, he takes pride mm -hmm. in knowing my dad from 1963 to 2002. Well, I take pride in knowing Kamal Hassan from 1961 mm -hmm. to the present. <laughs> and uh, as he pointed out, he was, uh, he was a member of the family, he was always gracious and hospitable to me. Once when he was rector, I visited him at the university at, at, uh, at UIA, and he surprised me by treating, you know, here is the, you know, the rector of the university, by taking me to a side room to the rector's office and, he, and where he had, he treated me to a feast of durian <laughs> in the office of the rector. I don't know anybody <laughs> else who got treated to this wonderful thing. Now, of course, this was before, this was like, you know, before the new genetically engineered varieties of D22, <laughs> D24, Musang King, etc. But, uh, you know, we, uh, we, uh, we have to show our, our durian credibility here. Uh, my, my deep gratitude also to the rest of the participants. Yang Rubahagia Dato' Muhammad Dawood Bakar, Yang Rubahagia Dato' Wan Muhammad and Dato' Sheikh Abdul Aziz, Yang Rubahagia Dr. Sri Diraja, Dr. Zam Abdul Qadir, who also regaled us with some amusing stories of uh, some of what happened to some of the students at the, at the UIA. Um, I, I will focus my remarks today because I don't have much time left. Uh, I'll, I'll focus my remarks today on two aspects. Um, one is a couple of highlights from my father's contribution and legacy to Islamic education in Malaysia. And the second part of my comments will be to take uh, that uh, Tansri Zul's, uh, uh, you know, teeing up the issue of what, sh what I believe should be IIUM's role uh, in creating a future legacy for itself as well, in shaping the future of Islamic education, not only for Malaysians, but for the global Muslim Ummah. Uh, and, and to my father, I'm sure that would be, in his mind, the best way that UIA could honor his legacy. My father loved to quote to me the hadith of Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib, the Prophet's cousin, who said that you should educate your children for a time different from your own. I've often thought of this hadith ever since I heard it from my dad. And this means that we should assess future trends and events and prepare our, our young ones, our children, so that they can successfully face these future challenges. As has been pointed out, my father was sent in February of 1955 by Al-Azhar University to start the Muslim College, uh, which uh, was actually, the initiative was, was begun by, by Sayyid Ibrahim Amar al in Singapore, but they could not find a campus for it anywhere. And the, uh, the Sultan of Selangor at that time, 
Sultan Hisham Uddin Shah offered one of his istanas uh, in Kampong Jawa in Klang to be the first campus of College Islam. This is, of course, before Merdeka. And as in pointed out, the educational system then, not only in Malaysia, but in most of the Muslim world until that time, was fragmented. It was fragmented between the traditional educational system and the secular educational system that was introduced by the colonizing powers. The traditional education was based on the Qutab system, which existed in Egypt and other Muslim world countries, of teaching students the Quran and, and Arabic to the extent of the qualifications of the particular teacher. And for those who graduated from the Qutab system were able to, to who are very, very few, uh, try to continue their Islamic studies at an institute like Al Azhar University. The Qutab system in Malaysia was then known as the Pondok system, taught in the Kampongs and in Indonesia as the Pesantren school system. The Pesantren still exists in, in, in Indonesia, as, you, as many of you know. Uh, at that time, the European colonizing powers of England, France, and to a less, much, much lesser extent, Holland and Italy, introduced their own educational systems, which taught the so-called secular subjects like mathematics, physical and social sciences, and of course, the language of the colonizing country. <clears throat> because the governments of, at, at that time, even in, in these colonies, were run by the colonizers, the outcome or one outcome of this bifurcated educational system was that the graduates from their secular educational system were the ones who were selected to run the civil service. They were the ones who had, were offered the jobs in government. Whereas the, so the social byproduct of this was that graduates from the traditional educational system had no professional future other than to become poorly, relatively poorly paid teachers of the Quran and Arabic, while the graduates of the secular education system went on to become civil service employees, government had government jobs, had better jobs, better paying jobs, better salaries, and more influential positions, ultimately became the leaders of the country on the leaders of the government. So this created a social fragmentation and rift in many of these societies, much less in Malaysia than it was in Egypt, for example, or in Turkey, when Egypt used to have the shayukh and the effendis, as they used to call them, those who were graduates of the Qutab and Azhari system, and those who were graduate of the Cairo University and Ain Shams University and the other universities. Uh, and particularly in the major Islamic societies of Egypt, Turkey, Iran, Nigeria, India, uh, what is to then Tafas, what is to Pakistan, Bangladesh, this, this rift, uh, you know, uh, existed and, and in, to some extent even has its continued existence as well. Now, my father had the benefit of studying both at Al-Azhar University, where he obtained the highest degrees of Al-Aliya and al alamiya in 1944. And in 1950, was sent by Al-Azhar, you might find this surprising, to study in England, where he got his bachelor's and master's degrees from Cambridge University and his PhD later from London University. Now, the fact that my father was able to do that, that he was sent to England by Al-Azhar, was the result of the efforts by Sheikh Muhammad Abdu, who was Sheikh Al-Azhar back in the late 1800s, and who was Sheikh Al-Azhar, uh, and who felt that the Al-Azhar uh, would benefit uh, by being exposed both to the traditional hermeneutics mm -hmm. and Western hermeneutics. But at the time of Sheikh Muhammad Abdu, his, his efforts to, 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 to expose the Azhari students to this kind of, a, uh, of educational was frustrated because many uh, of his contemporaries who had, who had the power also, in, in, in other, the deans and others, felt that teaching Azhari students the language of Kuffar, what they call language of the Kuffar, like English and French, was bordering on something haram. But his students, when they then became the deans and teachers of Azhar University, were a couple of decades later, were able to institute, to implement his, his views. And my father was one of the beneficiaries of this attitude. Now, you may smile at this, you know, about the language of the Kuffar and clothing of the Kuffar. But when I first went to Malaysia in 1955, you would never see a Malay praying in a mosque in pants and a shirt. Even the Malays who 
wore, you know, shirts and, and pants to their offices, would take along their sarongs and their baju malayu to the mosque, change them in the change into their baju malayu and sarongs, perform their juma prayers in their salah, then change back into their work clothes and then go back to the office. Mm-hmm. Now today you'll see Malay spring juma with baseball caps and reverse <laughs> t-shirts with logos of like Hard Rock Cafe and other Western companies and cargo pants. Mm -hmm. Why? Because today we no longer associate Western clothing, language or Western culture with any religion or even with any anti-religious attitude for that matter. Now, at the time my father first came to college Islam, the students who came to the college were products of the Pondo educational system. They had no exposure to studying English. Many of them did not know English at all. Uh, and to any of the secular subjects. Now, because of my father's relationships with both Al-Azhar and London University, he succeeded by 1960 to have the degree of the College Islam recognized by both Al-Azhar University and by London University as equivalent to a bachelor's degree. Now, this was unthinkable at the time. I mean, people, you know, look kind of like, look down a bit upon the Muslim college students as being somehow the, you know, from the lower, the lower rung of, of, you know, of the economic ladder, the lower rung of, you know, whatever it you might call in, in Malaysian society. But because my father was able to do that and sent the first batch of students to both Al-Azhar University and London University to obtain their masters and, and, and that for the first two went to London, got their degrees in law. So those who returned with these advanced degrees, especially from London University, they were readily recognized by the Malaysian education authorities as no less qualified than those who graduated from the University of Malaya. And they were now deemed qualified for all government and civil service jobs. So this one single accomplishment of my father did more to break this, what I call a societal divide in Malaysia between those who graduated from the traditional Pondok school system and those who graduate from the secular educational system. Now, as many of you know, College Islam then went on in another incarnation to become University of Kabang Sa'an, I believe, and the rift between the two systems of education were permanently erased. In 1959, the University of Malaya, which was then in Singapore, opened up a new campus in Pantai Valley. It was then, as was pointed out by one of the previous speakers, that my father was invited to become the first head of the Department of Islamic Studies. And from then until he left Malaysia in 1964, he simultaneously held this position and the position of principal of the College Islam in Klang. No doubt his degrees from Cambridge and London universities and his personal relationships with Muslim, with scholars of Islam at those universities contributed to his nomination to that position. In fact, when my father defended his PhD thesis at London University, his board of examiners consisted of three leading professors of Islamic studies, Professor Arthur Arbery, whose translation of the Quran called the Quran Interpreted, and whose translations of works of Arabic and Sufi poetry and philosophy are among my favorite pieces of lit- literature, was one of his examiners. The other two were Alfred Guillaume and Professor Robert Sargent. After two hours of defending his thesis, which was on predestination and, de- and human free will, in the Quran, al qadr wal Qadr, as it is said in Arabic, Professor Abri commented to my father that it is an excellent piece of work. My father was very pleased with that comment, by the way. Um, my father taught an introduction to Islam course at the University of Malaya and was proud in his later years that many of the future leaders of Malaysia took that course, among whom were, were, were people like the future head of the Malaysian Central Bank, Tan Sri Zeti, Dr. Sri Anwar Ibrahim, and Tun Mahathir's wife, Siti Hasma. But the two most notable students who actually specialized in Islamic studies at the University of Malaya were our brother, Professor Muhammad Kamal Hassan and Tun Abdullah Badawi. My father always believed that the success of his students reflected on him. And he took enormous satisfaction and pride from not only the first professional accomplishments of these two, but also in their personal human excellence of their human behavior their piety, their iman, and their ihsan. And no one, no one who knows Professor Kamal Hassan, and no one who knows Pa'la, you know, Tuna Abdullah Badawi, leaves that feeling 
their human excellence without feeling that they're in the company of someone whom Allah calls among al-muqarrabun, those who are Allah's intimates and dearly beloved ones. This highlights another notable thing about my dad. He did not regard education as just the transformation of knowledge, the teaching of a subject. It was that certainly, but it was not just about the transformation of knowledge and information. It was equally as much about the Islamic moral education of the individual. My father was very dedicated, completely dedicated to improving, lifting, and encouraging his students to be the very best that they could. He was not punitive, as I mentioned, as, uh, as the, uh, Professor Kamal mentioned, if they committed a mistake, but always sought to find a way to fix the situation and make his students even be better. I'll illustrate this point by a couple of stories that describe his personal impact on his students over and beyond the kind of impact that my dad had upon those college Islam graduates who went on to advanced degrees at Al-Azhar and London universities. Juan was of the late Ismail Arifin, who was a student at College Islam from Pahang. My father noticed that one year he did not return after the holidays to continue his studies. So my father wrote to, to, to Ismail, at that time there were no cell phones and communication was very difficult, uh, asking why he did not return. Ismail did not respond. So my dad persisted by having some of the college staff, you know, who were Malays, like maybe they, they would be able to find out, to contact his family. They informed him that Ismail could, did not return because his family could not afford the tuition fees, relatively modest tuition fees. On learning this, my father got the board of the Muslim college to exempt him from the fees, grant him a full scholarship, and, and wrote to him, said, please come back. The result was that Ismail came back. He finished his degree. He was tops at College Islam, a number one in the Arabic language. He went on to continue his studies at Lazar University, and he returned and became a lecturer at University of Kabangsan. Ismail was eternally grateful to my dad, for without my dad's help, he felt he would never have attained the position he did. And when my dad returned to Malaysia in 1983 to become the first rector at IUM, Ismail was one of those who wept on meeting my dad. Mm. The other story I had was when my dad was rector at IIUM. Apparently, if I remember the details well, a Bangladeshi student, male student, fell in love with another UIA student. I don't remember whether the girl was Bangladeshi or not. Maybe what some of you might know the details of this story. Apparently, they were caught alone together, and the authorities at the university wanted to punish them, I guess, for what they deemed un-Islamic behavior. <laughs> now, my dad never considered falling in love un-Islamic. I remember that case. <laughs> you know the case? <laughs> I remember. <laughs> Classmate of uh, Dr. Zamri. <laughs> <laughs> so my father instead, as I remember the story, and you can all correct me on this, uh, my dad called each of the students to his office. He asked the boy if he generally loved the girl, and the girl if she loved the boy. They both said yes. He then asked them if they were serious and would be willing to marry each other. They both said yes. My father then contacted the parents of the boy and the girl and asked the parents for their permission to have him have their children wed. They agreed. As I was going over this story, I just could not imagine in my mind, I, had, or I could imagine in my mind, what must have gotten to the minds of the parents when they got a call from the rector of the university where their kids were studying. Um, even in America, when a parent gets a call from a high school principal, they start worrying and saying, what did my kid do wrong? So just imagine having the, su the surprise of a parent, having the rector of IIUM calling to ask for your daughter's hand in marriage. I imagine that would be a very difficult request to refuse. Anyway, my dad then had my mother get a wedding cake for them and arranged for a, 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 a wedding ceremony and party. So from this, you see, my father always looked for the most harmonious solution to a situation. And in the process, I believe, taught us an important lesson on educating the human individual because it was not transfer of knowledge. You can, I mean, my, my iPad and my computer has more knowledge than I have, but it is the education of a human being which is really the objective. And so now to segue to the second part of my presentation, uh, which is what I believe should be IUM's role and future legacy 
in shaping the future of Islamic education, not only for Malaysians, but for the global Muslim Ummah. Since 1965, I've lived in the United States and I've become over the years a spokesman, a spokesperson for Islam in America, and in fact, even in other Western countries, I've been from Australia to Europe, etc. In, 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 sorry, in 2003, as a result of 9-11, I started an initiative focused on improving Muslim Western world relations called the Cordoba Initiative. One of its projects is what we call the Cordoba House Project. And one of Cordoba House's programs is an educational program suitable for our children growing up in Western cultures. As all of you here know, education is a humongous effort. It's huge. It requires significant, significant human resources, which in turn requires significant financial resources. That's why education is of its own ministry. And in Malaysia, we have a minister of education. Much of current Islamic education in the Western world to the young ones I'm talking about, not at you know, college and universities, to, to our young children is ad hoc. It's taught by volunteers and people who are not necessarily pedagogically qualified. We started an Islamic school, therefore, which we call the Cordoba School, for our young ones in New York, because many of the parents who come to this did not feel comfortable with the existing Islam, so-called Islamic schools. They found them too parochial, too based on a back-home approach country. It's from Pakistan or from Egypt or from you know, West Africa or whatever. It's too, its approach was based purely on a transfer of knowledge and hardly, if any, focus on the spiritual development of the individual. One way I've described our school is to say that if our deen is Islam, Iman, and Ihsan, these schools, which call themselves Islamic schools, are just Islamic schools. They don't focus much, if any, on teaching Iman and Ihsan. So I wanted to, therefore, I mean, the way I describe our Qurdaba school program or objective is to be not only an, an Islamic school, but to be an Imanic school and an Ihsanic school. Only then, I am convinced, can we help our young ones and prepare them adequately, adequately to face the current and future challenges, especially of living in a majority non-Muslim society whose culture, not only we cannot avoid, we become imbued with. So as we developed our syllabus over the following couple of years, we discovered we had no problem getting students. In fact, we have a waiting list of parents who want to admit their students into our school. Our greatest difficulty was in finding qualified teachers to teach our program. When we were interviewing teachers, we recognized those who recognized the lack of capacity to teach our syllabus, they just backed out. Those who were willing, we discovered, we still had to engage in, in, in like training or discussions about what, what we wanted them what we wanted them and how we wanted them to teach our, our young ones. So what, what I quickly realized was that in order to teach a given syllabus, one also has to teach the teachers. And I learned through this experience firsthand the critical role of teachers' colleges in ensuring that an education is effective and that it delivers on its intended objectives. So as much as we individuals, let's say, I as an individual may have talent in any given subject, say mathematics, but I will still benefit enormously from being schooled. And I go to school for, for like, you know, 10, 12, 13 years and go to university so that to advance the depth of my knowledge and expertise in, in, in mathematics. But even if I become a great scholar in mathematics, it does not necessarily mean that I can teach mathematics well. Being a great math teacher or a teacher of any given subject is a separate skill from being a great scholar of mathematics or of that particular subject. This is where I believe IIUM can step in and fill this gap and play a leading role in shaping Islamic education globally, an education that is not only Islamic, but Imanic and Ihsanic. What we also need today is, is an education that is global in its outlook and includes educating students in a Western culture. Now, Western culture is not just, you know, culture of, you know, Europe, America, Canada, and New Zealand and Australia. Whether we admit it or not, 
the whole world has been influenced by Western culture. And what I've discovered is that the wealthy or the elite class, what I call the elite class, in all countries in the Muslim world and the rest of the world for that matter, they send their children to Western universities, to England, to the United States, to France. That was Zamri came to, to Temple University. Kamal, Professor Kamal Hassan came to Columbia University. So we all, uh, they, they, they go to Western universities and the result is that many of the elite in all these societies are very Western to various degrees are Western in their outlook, their modes of dress, their lifestyles, their politics, whatever. In my community in the United States, I also see increasing intermarriage between Muslims of different cultures and, I, and between Muslims and non-Muslims for that matter. I have myself conducted many such weddings between a white American man and a black American lady, between a Bangladeshi lady and a white American man between an Indian Muslim lady and an Italian American man, between a Bosnian lady and a Senegalese man, between a Pakistani man and a Turkish lady. In the last wedding I just performed, uh, like, you know, uh, a couple of weekends ago, between a white American man and an, Emirat an Emirati lady. All of them are successful professionals. They are lawyers, pharmacists, doctors, working in the financial or banking sector. The generation of their children need an Islamic education suitable for them. So we need, in addition to that, it has to be informed by a, a globalized fiqh, a fiqh which is suitable for the Western and the global world today. A jurisprudence that is suitable for Muslims living in increasingly globalized societies. And we cannot just easily impose the classical fiqh of one madhab, especially on couples who combine different madhabs. I can tell you stories like, you know, uh, a lady from Pakistan who called me or, or somebody who called me and said, a friend of mine had a fight with his wife and he said, I, I talak you three times, you know, instead of anger. And then uh, I, after the, a day later, he got regretted and he called his mullah in Pakistan. said, no, no, you have to leave your wife now. You can't live with her, you know, and, and, she, and, and they just don't know what to do. So helping such members of the Western Muslim community requires not only sufficient familiarity with the theory of Islamic jurisprudence, it also requires a keen insight into the vagaries of human nature and how to apply such rules in a meaningful way so that people accept them with some level of understanding that can enable them to internalize these laws or rules. I mean, I would even be, I would coin the expression applied Islamic law to refer to this practice of how to practice Islamic law in such contexts, to differentiate these skills from purely theoretical knowledge of Islamic jurisprudence. IIUM's institutional structure, its population structure, makes it a natural for this task. In many ways, the students and faculty of IIUM represent a global cross-section of the Muslim Ummah. And as we say in America, it's therefore a no-brainer that IIUM should play a key role, if not the key role, in spearheading such an initiative to develop a grand educational plan for the future of Islamic education, focusing on the individual, on Iman and Ihsan, addition to Islam, so as to fulfill Imam Ali's hadith that I quoted in the beginning of my presentation, namely, that we educate our children for a time different from our own. What better way can you all honor my late father and create your own legacy than by taking such a lead? I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he may guide us all and guide you all in, in, in cooperating in such a worthwhile venture. And finally, I wish to thank you once again for the great honor of this event and for inviting me to participate in it. And I pray that Allah may bless you all with his peace and his salams. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. عليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته. السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته. وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته. Thank you very much, Shaiman Faisal, for this also perspective of IUM and relating it to late and three professor Dr. Muhammad Abdurrahouf. I would like to thank all the speakers and participants in this webinar. Uh, we have made you to stay a bit late uh, at night because actually it was also very early in the morning uh, for uh, Imam Faisal. <laughs> so we are on the opposite sides of the world. 
the far <laughs> east and the far west. <laughs> <laughs> it's no problem, uh, Brother Dr. Walid, because we are still we still got time uh, until 1st of June because the Malaysian government just announced that we are going to have a total lockdown on the 1st of June until oh. 14th of June just now. <laughs> really? So, <laughs> yeah, oh. yeah. Yeah. It's going to be total lockdown, bro. Total <laughs> lockdown. Oh, my right. God. So, so, so good until, the 14th, until 14th of June? Yeah. 14th of June. Uh, this is going to be the first uh, first phase. And uh, oh. if if, uh, if nothing improved, the, the government uh, will consider to go for the second phase. So, uh, no, so, no, because I applied. <laughs> we have done it earlier. We have done the webinar earlier, alhamdulillah. <laughs> uh, good, good, good. I'm, 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 I'm uh, in KL now. I'm going back to, to repo tomorrow. So um, I thank you again. Thank you very much for uh, your participation, your thoughts. And uh, I think this is just a start. Uh, um, inshallah, uh, we will try to um, manage uh, a wider perspective on uh, the history of Islamic education in Malaysia to try to put it. Um, I know there's some publication in uh, in uh, Hasmalayu, but uh, it, it would be a good idea that IOM also to uh, have uh, its own project uh, on, in this perspective, and how uh, also the this perspective have been changing through time, and what should be the future for it. Um, I think this would be a nice project for uh, for IOM, for us, for IMO, for uh, many of us to, to participate. Uh, thank you very much again. Uh, we really appreciate your time. Uh, I know um, I'm really, um, I cannot say uh, much because I know all of you are busy people. And uh, thank you for uh, taking time to be with us in this seminar. And inshallah, we pray to see you hopefully physically, face to face, and other events uh, soon, inshallah, after the MCO. Inshallah. inshallah. Thank you very much. Inshallah. Thank you. Inshallah. Uh, there, is, uh, there is a photo session. They ask us uh, to have a photo session. So okay. uh, uh, those okay. who did not turn on their camera, please turn on your camera. Okay. <laughs> Are you sure you for, 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 for a while. <laughs> okay. We have to take the photo session here. Yes, uh, the, the traditional photo session, <laughs> concluding ones. I think, I think everybody can. Every, I'm not sure whether everybody can appear or not. Uh, no, they, they can appear. Uh, everybody can appear. Yes. Participant, all the participants, right? Uh, Yes, yeah. uh, at least on Zoom, oh, yeah, uh, not yeah, on yeah. Uh, YouTube. And uh, on yeah, Zoom, it will appear, but uh, the, on YouTube, no. Yes. Okay. Uh, who else? One, two, three, two, one. Thank you. Someone, no. uh, I, I, you MVC. Oh, with, uh, are you MVC already left? No. Oh, okay. oh yeah. Right. Tansu is Zoom. Natasha no, is here. Natasha is there. Is there? Um, no, is there? Everybody is yeah, there. there. He's there. Okay, yeah. good, good. Okay. Everybody is there. So now, now I can see everyone's now. But brother Tahir, mashallah. <laughs> oh, salam alaikum. You are here. <laughs> One of our most senior brothers in, uh, in IAU. Thank you so much. Nice Inshallah. to see you. Nice to see you. Uh, okay. Thank so, you, Prof. Uh, Prof. Uh, Prof. Uh, Prof. Yeah. Prof. Come on. Thank you. Thank you very much. Prof. Thank Prof. You, Walid, yeah. Prof. Walid, can I ask uh, Imam Faisal to allow us to uh, have uh, access to the PhD of his father, the dissertation of the late Prof. Raouf? Okay, if, uh, if, if you have it, I think this would be a good idea. Yeah. Uh, yeah my, uh, do my, father, my father's PhD dissertation? Yes. It would be uh, uh, interesting to get it. I believe the, I, I will search for it. Inshallah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. The, the other observation, if I may, uh, uh, Professor Walid, uh, is that uh, I think some of our friends trying to uh, go through, uh, browse through uh, internet uh, to get, uh, you know, uh, the backgrounds uh, and the life and uh, the book, the works of uh, uh, Professor Raouf. Um, unfortunately, uh, I don't think they have many of them. So I think uh, effort must be done. Uh, probably uh, IIU, Tansri Zoo. Uh, if we can uh, put uh, in the uh, online internet uh, sharing uh, with, with uh, 
the uh, netizens on on his work uh, for you know if everybody wants to if anyone wants to access to to his work so in today's world as you know that, that everybody wants to go through very quick information very quick search uh, of information so um, I myself I, you know, because I wanted to write something on on, on him. Uh, I found it very difficult. I got to call Tan Sri Yusuf. I got to call all his former students to, to get some information. Of course, I got some uh, of, of, of my reflection of the recollection that I have. But of course, uh, to have a, a very good source like the books that you're talking about just now, you know, uh, that really uh, needs someone to work on. Um, so, yeah. yeah, thank you. If I can just respond to that very quickly. We are preparing to celebrate the 40th anniversary of the university in 2023. Yeah. Our know, work is on to get all this thing, including some of the classical uh, work done by the rectors. Yeah, so we hope by 2023, we will have a better uh, kind of a compilation of Very what good. belongs to the university. Because I think on yeah. the 40th anniversary, there will be no people like uh, gone through to yeah. understand actually what the university is all about. So if you can help us to make this collection, I'll be more than happy to, to, to you know. Very good. Including, uh, you know, uh, the leading personalities like yeah. Professor Kamal um, and the rest. I think it's time for us to uh, to keep this uh, as part of our legacy for, for the future generation to refer. Not, not only the scholars, we're also talking to the first bus driver, to the first gardener. You can Very good. That. Yeah, the, the driver of Tansri uh, passed away uh, several years uh, ago. One Muhammad, uh, brother Faisal. Yeah. If oh, you remember, really? one one Muhammad. Yes, in yeah. the faithful driver of Tansri we, passed we, away we, several years ago. We remember the story from from him. I mean, I was student in you know, ah. student time during student time because uh, when uh, the Tansri uh, came first came to to, to Malaysia. You know, um, he came uh, as a you know, quote unquote as a bachelor, no one behind him. So he <laughs> needs to cook sometime. He, one day he bought a chicken. So how to cook a chicken, you know, how to cut it. And then the first thing he did was uh, he used a sabun. Uh, he washed the but with sabun. <laughs> <laughs> We shampoo. Shampoo, you know, just uh, <laughs> shampoo, you know, he shampooed the, the, the chicken. So it's just quite interesting that so, you know, I, I shared this one, uh, Brother Sabirin, Dr. Sabirin shared with me. <laughs> Thank you. I think the nice story here. Yeah. That's so uh, yeah, this one. Uh, yeah. Thank you. One of the funny stories I remember about the driver, <laughs> my father's yeah. driver, when my father was in Kusa, huh. uh, and then the driver apparently, uh, uh, one day entered to the 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 the, the, uh, the the whoever the president or the principal of that Akusa uh, was, and he was very upset. And he said, "What? What?" So he asked, "What's the matter?" He said, uh, "You know, uh, uh, Professor Abdurrahman the other day asked me to take him because he wanted to makan makan anjing." <laughs> and he said, how, how can a Muslim oh, scholar want to eat a dog? And, and, he's, and, and he'd realized that my father wanted to make an onion. <laughs> and the driver didn't understand, he couldn't understand my father's accent. <laughs> that was a good one. A good one, though. <laughs> uh, it's like uh, the, the book um, Sejarah Melayu, you know, mm. the conversation between Maulana Ishaq uh, with uh, the Sultan, uh, I'm not mistaken, Sultan Mansur Shah, mm. when the Maulana was trying to teach him on some Islamic uh, words, uh, the Kuching, you know, Malay said Kuching, uh, to the Maulana try to, <laughs> to repeat it and uh, to pronounce it, uh, become Kuching. Kushing. And then finally, the, the, the Sultan said to the Maulana, Look, even Maulana uh, need to be thought. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, my, my, my niece, Iman, I have a niece who I wanted me to teach her the Tajweed of the Quran a little bit. And uh, when, I, when Dr. Azamur was talking about the Sheen, this, this story, I remember <laughs> she had a problem and she was reciting the first verses of, um, of a Safat. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 <laugh
Mm-hmm. So the difference between the ta and the teen, yeah. you know, ta. So yeah. teen, as I said, is stick created from yeah. sticky mud. Yeah. Whereas <laughs> teen is figs, is uh, you know. Uh, uh, so I said, no, you're not. We're not created from sticky figs. We're created from sticky mud. <laughs> <laughs> so, and she said, I can't hear the difference between the two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, see the, some of the challenges that we have in, in languages. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Thank you once again. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you once again. Thank, thank you, you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. It's really fun. Good luck. 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 Good luck.